Okay, my name is Akashi guys and in this video here we got a should you summon for the new Legends Limited Super Vegeta who's also coming alongside Android 16. We have the kit for LL Super Vegeta but we don't for Android 16. For how these videos go we just focus on the main Legends Limited because if you're just summoning for the side character that's too big of a risk especially if you're free to play. I'll be giving you my opinion but on top of telling you whether I'm summoning or not so whether it's worth it for you and also whether I'm going to be summoning. We'll also go through a kit breakdown and I'll give you some advice to consider when you're deciding whether you want to summon. But before we get any further into this video, let me know how many Chronicles you guys have got in your account right now. I assume it's not a lot, but we'll have to see maybe some of you guys have been saving for this. Anyways, I'm talking too much. Let's get into the core of the video right now. Okay, so let's get into the core of the video. Like I said, we got to give some advice on whether you should be summoning or not given your current situation. In general, I like to advise that 20,000 is optimal optimal for any banner. Optimal meaning that it's the best amount that you should have if you're going into a banner. Any lower than that you'll be running the risk of just not pulling the unit. But I will say from my stream results where I have people summon all the time and from my results most people pull the unit within 14,000 chrono crystals. So if you're way below that and you might want to reconsider summoning. But of course at the end of the day if you want the unit you're going to summon so I don't fault you if you go for it. I also like to say that you guys are not content creators mostly because you're watching this video you probably aren't a content creator so what i will say is watch showcases before you go ahead and summon if i decide to summon i will be doing a showcase but if you don't want to watch me you've got all your other favorite content creators on the platform that you can watch so everybody might do a different team everybody might do the same team whether that's the case or not you want to see results of what the unit can do in ranked pvp around decent teams and most content creators already got high stars anyways so it's a good representation if they can't do good on good star teams then they're probably just trash but at the same time if they're doing super good on high star team that could be misinformation because you might not have high star teams so just consider that when watching showcases but showcases will give you your first hand experience before you even go and spend your chrono crystals because content creators will do the work for you Another thing I advise is that you could potentially wait until the last day. So if you wait until late, you can then get a better sight of whether he's being used in the meta or not. A lot of times, people might seem good on the first day but fade out very quickly. So if you give it some time, people would very much then start to dedicate their teams to that unit if they're actually worth summoning on. But in the first week, people would use them naturally just because they're new. And the last thing I want to say is you want to consider the near future for yourself. The Cell Saga might have not been what you're looking for, but you might be interested in it in a bit. But maybe the next Saga that might drop could be Future. And then Future, they drop like a tank top drunks. If you're a hybrid Saiyan main, there you go. Your Chrono Crystals are gone. You can't get it now. Or maybe you're a Goku Black main, they drop a Goku Black. We don't know what's next. And that's really the risk with summoning in this game. But if you miss out now, you won't be able to get it later because it's a new unit. It'll probably come out way deep into the year. Talking even after the anniversary, which is in May, spanning through all the way to August. So just consider those factors before summoning. But besides from that, good luck. Right, so we're going to be going into LL Super Vegeta's abilities. I'm going to go through the kit, but I'm not going to read every individual line. I'm going to read the things that are most important in this kit. But of course, if you want to read his kit, it'll be out tomorrow. And there's also the website, the official Dragon Ball Legends website. But yeah, let's get into the key elements of LL Super Vegeta's kit. So something you need to know is the fact that he's red. Naturally, the element is like the most important thing. He's red, so he's going to be fitting in with a lot of the good red units. But of course, they're not on the same team in the most cases. But you also consider his tags, Vegeta Clan Saiyan, Super Saiyan. And he's from the Cell Saga only naturally. If we look at his main ability here, he draws an ultimate art. And something to note is that his ultimate art is a range type. It's not the regular. So we haven't got a range type ultimate since like Super Saiyan 3 Gold Tanks. But I'll get more into that when we get to the ultimate. He's going to get health, key. He's going to restore uh, or charge his unique gauge by 50%. But he's going to restore his vanishing gauge by 100%. I think this is the biggest thing. The restore vanishing gauge thing is going to be super valuable. And you'll see that as we get further into the kit. But on top of that, he has cover null that he gets for 10 time accounts. I know a lot of people cancel buffs like this once you pop your ultimate and whatnot. But for the meantime, before you pop your ultimate, you might want to consider just popping the main so you can continue your combo. You also reduce the enemy Dragon Balls by one. But, you know, that's not major, but it can make the difference in a PvP game. You don't know how many Dragon Balls your enemies on. This Vegeta is strike based, so if you look towards his Z ability, it's strike attack and defense during battle. And then you also get a base blast attack if you have like, you know how the Z abilities work. You guys can read it for yourself. I'm not going to lie to you. But the Z abilities be reading so mad with these numbers plus 30% to tag vegeta clan episode you gotta read every single bit 
But you see Vegeta Clan, you see Cell Saga, you see Saiyan. Those are the three tags mainly. And you get a little extra if you're with the Vegeta Clan, the blast defense there, 15%. Looking towards his strike cards, he has Blast Arm on it and he's going to reduce your key by 30 on hit. But what's also good is that that reduced 30 on hit is also available on the Blast card. So these two kind of twinning there, but because he's a strike based unit, the Blast Armor fits him pretty well, I'd have to say. So I like that about him. If we look at the special move over here, it's going to deal massive impact damage. Isn't anything crazy. Health restoration go down isn't anything crazy. But if you want to consider what type of loot card it is, it's kind of like uh, Tag 4s. If you guys know, you destroy your cards to get more damage. So if you're destroying two or more, you'll be getting 60% special move damage and restore key by 30, which is good, right? But it's going to destroy cards, all of your cards. If it's only zero cards, then you're going to do less damage. But it's got Blast Armor. It's a close range type, just to point that out. If we go towards the green card, here you're drawing a new card every single time. You're going to restore your key, charge unique gauge by 20%, damage inflicted, health restoration. Health restoration is going to be super, super good. You're going to see that in this uh, kit. It's actually insane how much healing Vegeta has. But then he's going to decrease the cost of your blue cards, which is also good. You ran also randomly destroy two enemy cards. So if you've got two green cards, that's all of their cards gone, just like that, which is wild. The ultimate art here is the type that has different effect if his unique gauge is full. And yes, he has a unique gauge. So if we look at it over here, applies the following effects to self upon activation. And he's going to get 40% damage inflicted and nullify endurance like most units. But then in addition to that, if the gauge is full, you're going to get 30% extra damage inflicted for ultimate arts. And you're going to get 30% enemy sustained damage cut effects, which is also good. Now, if we go into the unique ability one over here. The main thing you want to point out is that he charges unique gauge by 30% when he's, the battle starts. He starts with 30% filled. So that's good to note. Draw speed, damage inflicted, reduce damage received. Like everybody has that in their kit somewhat shape or form. Every time he comes into the battlefield, so as, as soon as he switches in, he's going to get a strike cards. And that strike cards will do way more damage. You see 50% here. But he also gets damage inflicted 60%, which cannot be cancelled, but it only activates once. So that first switching is going to be quite important. I advise you don't really start with him. You switch into him when you need him. Because as well, he inflicts all enemies with two sub counts. Kind of like final form cooler, which is very, very valid. You should very much consider this when you're actually switching in because they won't be able to switch out. You might be able to rise and rush, get a free ultimate, depending if you're chaining with the blast arts, so on and so forth. If we look down here, this isn't major, but it's good for what he's going to be able to do. So you see more health restoration here. I'm telling you the healing on this guy is insane. But this happens when he's two def defeated battle members are in his team. So if he's last stand, he's going to charge his own unique, unique gauge by 50%. The gauge thing, it might seem like crap. But when his gauge fills, he becomes a literal superhuman. What was it? We even say super, super saiyan, bro. You might go call that super saiyan too. But <laughs> yeah. Here, the falling effects occur every three time accounts while he's on the battlefield. So every three time accounts for infinite times, this one, he's going to be healing 3% and getting 20 key. So his combo extension is going to be dumb. But here he gets damage effect 20%, but this is only up to 60%. So nine time accounts, you get 60%. Here... The effects is uh, reset when you switch and you're going to get these things inflicts damage, uh, inflicts enemy with attribute downgrades so damage received and the cost goes up. The last part is the unique ability. The following effects occur when his character uh, switches, when enemy character switches. So you're going to get 15% damage inflicted, which is dope. And shorten ally sub count by two, which happens five times, which makes it easy for you to switch out if you need to eventually. And then on top of that, reduce the enemy key, then some more attribute downgrades down here. Like everybody has strike cuts, blast arts, power, and then special move, ultimate, and awakened arts. Going into unique ability two, he has a strike cover change. This is what this is over here. Basically here, they explain that his unique gauge is the type to charge very rapidly. And it fills up once every time he switches in and it's going to reset every time he switches out. So you need to make use of it when he fills up when you switch him in. But his unique gauge is dumb, which you will see. So every time it fills, you're going to get a Vanishing Gauge by 100%, which can activate three times. So if he's got four attempts of getting Vanish Recovery, his main ability, then three times through his Gauge. But that's every time it fills. Nullifies type element, so he goes type neutral for 15 time accounts. Applies the following above effects, so he gets cover off for 10 time accounts of his Gauge filling. He cancels attribute downgrades in normal conditions. Nullifies attribute downgrades in normal conditions, so he can't get hit with anything stupid. He seals enemy special move and ultimate awaken arts. Seals arts cannot be used for five time accounts. Seals rise and rush and the main ability. And that's all through the gauge fill, which is super insane. Which gives this guy crazy 3v1 capabilities with the fact that he has blast armor. If we're going down here, apl apply, also applies the following effects to self upon, uh, while the unit gauge is full. So if the unit gauge is full, he's going to get 30% damage inflicted. And he's going to get a level of draw speed, which is also super valid. 
Then down here, resets own unique gauge to zero when his character switched to standby, so only when he switches out. He gets HP, more HP by the way, key, and then he's going to give his allies 20% damage inflicted, and also applies the following effects uh, if unique gauge had been full. Uh, he's going to get more HP, restores health by 10%, you know, and then shorten sub count by 4, which is super, super good. So he has the ability to switch in and out fast, which is super good. Health restoration, super good. His gauge is insane, locking pretty much everything the enemy does, which is super good. But these, it's crazy that they don't have a limit. You know, the only thing that has a limit is the vanish recovery, but everything else doesn't have a limit, which is wild. Even though it's only five time accounts, it makes a difference. Now you wanna know whether it's worth it for you to summon on LL Super Vegeta. And really and truly, I think it's situational. I think a lot of people have been waiting for their Vegeta clan unit. So naturally the Vegeta clan users have already decided they're gonna summon. But with that being the case, if you are shaky about whether he's worth it or not, I will tell you firsthand, this unit is decent, bro. He's good, he's good. He has some good 3v1 capabilities, which is why I'm actually giving him a lot of praise. His unique gauge is super good, but he's reliant on that. So depending on how fast his gauge fills, it will actually dictate how effective he is because he's able to fill unique gauge through certain things like his green card. So if his unique gauge fills fast, it could be useful, but it could also be a negative because you want to get the abilities out at a certain time. It's not like a main ability you don't get to dictate when you use it. The gauge fills its filling naturally, then you can you fill it up faster through green cards, etc. etc. What else was in his kit? So I will say it is worth it, but you just need to be worried about those factors. But when his gauge does fill, it'll probably fill after you've already started your combo. So you'll be able to get your vanish back and then you get all the other benefits as well. For example, locking their rising rush main ability, etc. etc. So for him, I think it's super good to summon on him if you do want him. If he looks appealing to you, he also has the kit to back it. However, I think there are some bits that it depends on what he comes with. For example, if his damage isn't the greatest because of his stats, I don't think his kit will be enough to back it. That's me personally. But he does have 3v1 capabilities, so even if his damage isn't the best in the game, he still will be getting good support from the team that he's on. For example, Buller Drop. Buller works super well with this unit. That's a Vegeta clan unit you get. So... There are pieces there that make it fall into place, but at the same time, I don't want to say he's completely stranded, but there are some things that make me worry about his kit. So if you do want to summon and you find interest in this unit, I would say go for it. It's actually worth it. But for the large majority of people, I can't say it will be, especially looking at his element. If you look at Super 17, red. Beast Gohan, red. Ultra Vegeta Blue, red. The Support Pan, red. There's already a large roster of reds in the game. So adding this guy just to the list, it doesn't really benefit the whole game, but more so just one portion of the game, which would be Vegeta Clan in my eyes. You could also use him on Saiyans, I guess, but they already have a super good team. And I fear he might not be especially better than the pieces that are already on Saiyans. So I guess it kind of just has to play out. But for Vegeta Clan, 100%. Saiyans, I think he'll be good if you want to main him, but you'd have to maybe summon a bit more. But really just be wary about the way his kit works in general, so you aren't just like using him and thinking he's trash. You have to really consider the factors. Even his blue card, I don't like his blue card personally. I don't like the idea of destroying cards to become more powerful. I think that's pretty much annoying more than anything else, because you could have just gave him the 60%. But his kit does have strong capabilities so i will say it's worth it at the end of the day now another question i know people want to know whether i'm summoning i will be summoning in the morning so if you want to go and summon with me or watch with me i reset it's 6 a.m in the uk whatever time you're in convert that uk time is gmt i will be summoning for one copy i want one copy just off the fact that he's a saiyan i don't think i'll be going deeper because i'm trying to save honestly i want to save for something better maybe the ultra coming up there is 100 ultra coming up i don't know if it's going to be cell saga but it's something that you're going to want you know if it's a super saiyan 2 gohan the way i'm going to drop super vegeta just off the fact that it's, it's a gohan the bias is going to be crazy and you know legends will make gohan insane that's if they do a Cell Saga Ultra. But regardless, I think one copy will satisfy me unless someone just gifts me something, you know, it happens. But yeah, one copy, I'll be summoning. I think he's good as well, but I'm just not a Vegeta Clan guy. I really be running GT right now anyway, so I'll be good with that. And I have high star Super 17, so in my case, I'm good. But that's probably what people wanted to know whether I'm summoning or not. So there you go. But yeah, man, that's going to be the end of the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, man. If you haven't already, make sure to press that subscribe button. We're on this grind to 100 thousand subscribers we recently hit 79,000 subscribers close to 80,000 at least 20 percent left man appreciate you guys for watching the video man press the subscribe button my name is akashi guys and i will see you guys in the next one man